Python is one of the most in-demand tech skills at the moment, but how do you go about learning it in 2025? And what is Python actually used for and why should you bother learning it? We're going to dive into all of these topics in this video. Now, I've been using Python for over 10 years, and in that time, I've used it to build websites and web applications. I've used it to analyze data, to build machine learning models and neural networks, and also to automate certain tasks in different jobs I've had and also in my own life. And in that 10 years, I've seen Python grow hugely in popularity. And this largely corresponds with the emergence of Python as the main programming language in the data and AI space. So in the past 10 years, a lot of progress has been made. And when you think of things like LLMs, these have emerged after years of work on natural language processing and textual data analysis. And the bulk of that work has been done with tools in Python, such as TensorFlow, PyTorch and Scikit-Learn. So Python's popularity has increased a lot. And it's clear that it's an important language in the modern landscape. But let's start simple. What actually is Python? So Python is a high level programming language and it's got a design philosophy that emphasizes code readability. And one of the effects of this is that it's a lot less verbose than other languages like Java, for example. And one reason for that is because Python uses indentation rather than curly braces to define blocks of code. Now you can see on screen at the moment an example of printing hello world in Java and in Python. And in Python, you can see it's much less verbose, much cleaner. And this simplicity and easy to read style is one of the reasons why Python has grown a lot in popularity. Now you'll sometimes hear Python being called the Swiss army knife of programming languages. And this is down to its versatility. It really can be used to do a wide range of different tasks as we're about to see in this video. Now Python has actually been around since 1991 but it only really gained a lot of popularity from roughly 2010 onwards. And here we have a blog post from Stack Overflow in 2017, and it's called The Incredible Growth of Python. And if we scroll down here, we can see a chart. This is the growth of major programming languages since 2012. And you can see Python's rise here. It's quite incredible how it rose. And that's alongside the emergence of AI and data science. So while other languages like JavaScript, Java, PHP and C++ remained relatively stagnant, Python was rising this entire time until 2018. And if we look at the results of the 2024 Stack Overflow Annual Developer Survey, the modern picture is very much the same. In the technology updates section of this post that I'll leave a link to below the video, you can see that Python is among the top of the list of the most used languages in 2024. So Python is clearly an in-demand programming language, particularly if you want to work with AI and data science. And really, if you have any kind of data-based job, Python is going to be an incredibly good skill to have in your career. So why exactly is this? Why do so many people want to learn Python? And why are so many people using Python in the current day? So let's go over some reasons to use Python in 2025. One of the main reasons, of course, is its rising adoption in AI, machine learning, robotics, and other fields like that. Python is currently the dominant language in that area, and that doesn't look like it's going to change anytime soon. Another good reason to learn Python, as mentioned before, it's the Swiss army knife of programming languages. If you have a problem, chances are there's a Python package out there that's going to help you with that. And as well as that, there's an extremely active developer community and a rich ecosystem of third party packages to help you with any kind of task. Of course, another benefit is the high paying career opportunities that it provides. Python is used across all sorts of different industries. And it's also one of the more dominant languages in academia as well. And despite it being used widely in complex domains, Python is actually a fairly simple language to get a hold of. And there's a lower barrier to entry than other languages, for example, C Sharp, Java, C++, and so on. Python has a more simplistic philosophy, and that can help you get up and running with the language much quicker. And finally, one other reason for now, something that's pertinent to what we've done a lot on this channel, you can use Python to build complex web applications using frameworks like Django and FastAPI. And if you're interested in more of that, check out some of the other videos we've done on the channel. So clearly Python is a great skill to have and there's many good reasons to learn Python. And doing so could be very beneficial for your career and of course for your wallet as well. But the question is, how do we actually go about learning Python in 2025? Now, as with anything, we need to start with the fundamentals. And for Python, you want to master the core concepts of the language first and foremost. To start with, you'll want to learn the basic syntax and also the core data types of the language, for example, lists, dictionaries, and sets. And if you're coming from other languages, you'll want to get used to the indentation style of Python as well. Once you have the basics down, you can then move on to controlling the flow of the program. And for that, you're going to use things like for loops and if statements for conditional logic. For example, this statement on the screen now is going to give you all of the even numbers between 1 and 10. And in order to do that, it uses the loop. And then within that loop, we have a conditional statement. And if that evaluates to true, 
then the even number is printed out. You're also going to want to learn about functions in Python and also object-oriented programming. And you can write functions to encapsulate some logic. And these are essentially units of code that perform a specific task. You'll also want to learn about working with modules and packages in Python. Now, the standard library has many useful built-in packages, and there are many, many useful third-party packages as well. For example, PyTorch if you're doing machine learning and neural networks, and Django if you're building web applications. Now, once you've learned all of this, you can then move on and start writing your own programs. And that's the best way to learn any language, to experiment and to make mistakes, learn from it, and then keep iterating on what you've built. So here's an example of some of what we've talked about. We've got a small program here where we import the math module from the Python standard library. We then ask the user to enter a number and we use the input function for that. And the number that the user inputs is stored in this variable called number. We then have a try accept block. And within the try block, what we're doing is we're trying to convert the user input to a floating point number using the float function. We then have a conditional statement. We check if the number is less than zero. And let's say this program is for calculating the square root of a number. We cannot get the square root of a negative number. So if the number is less than zero, we're going to print this to the terminal. Otherwise, if the number is zero or more, we then call the math.squareRoot function and we pass the number in in order to get the square root of the number that the user entered. We then print that to the terminal and that's the end of the program. Now this accept block will catch the instances when the number cannot be converted to a floating point number. So when the user enters some input, imagine they enter the characters ABC, that cannot be converted to a float so that's going to cause an exception and that's a value error. And then we print this to the terminal in that case. Now we can try this program out on the terminal by running python3 app.py and then we get asked to enter a number. And if I enter the number 9, the square root of 9 is 3, and that's printed to the terminal. If we enter some characters, for example, ABC, we get the value error that cannot be converted to a float, and this is printed to the terminal. So by writing these kind of small applications where, for example, you get some input from the user and you do something with that input and you create some kind of outputs, that's the kind of programs that are useful for developers to write when they're learning these kind of languages. And we've demonstrated some simple things here like using modules, using functions in Python, using try except blocks to catch errors. And we've also seen things like conditional statements here to check the value of a number and then do something depending on whether it's less than zero or not. And we also have the notion of data types here where we take user input and we convert it to a floating point number. Now, of course, this is a fairly simple program. We can write much more definitive and complex programs as we get better at the language and master some of these concepts. Examples might be writing a web application for your work or automating some task that you do every day in the office. These can be great time savers, but you need to learn a bit more than just what we have here in order to do that. So how do we go from the basics here to the next level in Python? And this is where I'm going to recommend the thing that I've used a lot in the past in order to level up my skills in Python and also in other tools and frameworks. And that's DataCamp who are sponsoring this video. Now, the best way to learn anything is interactively. And that is why I really recommend our sponsored DataCamp and particularly their Python Fundamentals Learning Path. Now, DataCamp offer a variety of these skill tracks, for example, in SQL, Python, AI and so on. But the Python Data Fundamentals track is what you want to look at if you've learned the basics of the language and you want to level up and prepare for a career in data science with Python. And this program is going to teach you all of the fundamental data skills in Python across a 30 hour learning path that takes you from basic to advanced Python skills. Now, I'm particularly a fan of DataCamp because of the interactivity, as I mentioned a second ago. So as you progress through the lectures on this course, you get this interactive experience. And if we make this a little bit bigger, you can get some instructions on the left hand side and you have an answer section here on the right at the top. Below that, you have a shell where you can experiment with different code before you submit your final answer. So for example, on the bottom, we can print five divided by eight and we get the number 0 0.625. We can then run and submit this answer once we're confident in the solution. So this is interactive and it allows you to experiment with the language as you progress through the learning path. And once you've completed the Python Data Fundamentals track, there's a certification that you can get that's industry recognized as well. And that's the Python Data Associate Certification. And this can be really useful if you want to jumpstart your goal of having a lucrative career as a Python developer. The certification includes an exam and a final project. And this is quite a challenging one. Not everyone passes this certification. So doing so really gives you an advantage as you approach your career as a data scientist in Python. And gaining the certification is going to bring you new opportunities. Now, all of the learning materials for this certification are available in the Python Data Fundamentals track. So you can interactively learn everything you need. For example, an introduction to Python itself, 
we have intermediate Python, and then you start learning about data science and data tools in Python. For example, data manipulation with pandas, and pandas is the most popular data analysis tool in the language at the moment. And you can then learn how to join data with pandas. And if we look at more here, you also get to do data visualization using matplotlib and seaborn. And these are key packages for analysis in Python and for visualizing the data that you have. That ability to visualize and analyze data is going to be really important as you progress through your career as a Python developer. And notice as well, there are projects, for example, analyzing crime in Los Angeles. So you're given some data when you do those projects. And you can then use the skills that you've learned in the learning path in order to solve the problems presented in those projects. So all of that is roughly 30 hours of time investment, and I think it's a really good investment if you want to go from the basics of Python into a position where you're ready to take on a career in data. So for anyone looking to level up and learn Python in 2025, this Python Data Fundamentals track provides a comprehensive, interactive, and structured way to go from the basics to a point where you're able to analyze data, visualize it, and answer questions. And these are going to be key skills for your career in data science. So again, thank you to DataCamp for sponsoring the video. This is a really good platform. I highly recommend it. And their Python Data Fundamentals track is going to get you up and running as a data scientist. Now, what do you do after you've completed the Python Data Fundamentals track? Let's now consider what you might do if you want to advance to the next level in your Python journey. So once you have that good grounding in Python, you can then really dive in and write code that solves interesting problems and performs interesting tasks. And that could be complex analysis and visualization of data. It could be writing programs that integrate with large language models, or it could be building neural networks for specific tasks, or even just writing automations and web applications with things like Django, FastAPI, and Flask. I would recommend that you focus on your own projects and writing code as much as possible. And of course, tutorials are helpful, but once you get a good grounding, you really want to start diving in and writing code and creating things that you find interesting and useful. And Python is such a versatile and useful language, and it has such an amazing community and ecosystem that the possibilities are endless. Now, of course, there are many other good programming languages as well, but Python is in a unique position in 2025. So for anyone interested in data science, AI, scientific programming, and so on, it's a no-brainer that you should really learn Python and get up and running with the language. So that's all for this video, evangelizing Python in 2025, and also recommending a path that you can go from the basics to a good level in the language. And that includes writing your own programs and doing a track such as data camps that provides you a structured way to go from step A to step B using the Python programming language. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to drop them in the comments and I'll leave links to all of the resources just below the video. So thank you for watching and good luck in your Python journey in 2025.